Hey there, this is Math 6, Unit 2, Lesson 8, looking today at what we call how much for one. And so we're talking today a little bit about what we refer to as a unit price. All right, and that's kind of one of our objectives today is how much for one or a unit price there. And we're going to use ratios to describe how much things cost. So we began today with a little number talk, remainders and division. And it says find the quotient mentally here. And so, again, if it's mental math, that means there's probably a way to shortcut it in your brain a little bit, right? So you might want to think about if I split this down right there, I could think about a 12 going into 24. 12 is going to go into 24, uh, at, or 12, it'll go there two times. But we're talking about 246. Now, 12 is not going to fit into 6, so we would say it's going to go in there at least 20 times. And 20, if you multiply this by 12, would be 240 with a six left over still. Well, six out of 12 becomes the same as a half. So mentally, I could deduce that it's gonna be about 20 and a half. It's how you break that down, right? So I get a 20 out of this part by doing a two, adding a zero, and recognize that six becomes half of 12 for 20 and a half. That's the way I broke that down. But again, what's fun about number talks is how would you do it and talking about those things with your partners, all right. So let's take a look then at our activity today. We'll start with grocery shopping. And the grocery shopping, what we're trying to find out here really is this. How much for one item? That's the big question we're going to find out is how much for one item? You can go to the grocery store sometimes and you can find things on sale or find them in bulk. You know, and it's going to get six for two dollars or twelve for three dollars. The question is, how much does that really work out to when you're buying if you could buy just one? All right. So that's what we're talking about here. So answer his question, explain or show your reasoning. If you get stuck, consider drawing a double number line diagram. So we're trying to figure out how much for one. So for example, in the first one it says that eight avocados cost four dollars. So we know that we're getting eight avocados for four dollars. Okay, so let's look here, a little quick little number line. If I drew a line like this, and I made this my money one, and I drew another number line over here, and I made this my, I'll say, A for avocados, all right, what we're saying is that I can get, for $4, we'll put a four here on the money, I can get eight avocados, okay, we good with that? So here's my double number line, $4 can give me eight avocados, great. The question though, the first one says, how much do 16 avocados cost? Okay, so instead of eight, I'm gonna double that up, that's a times two, to get to 16. Well, if I have 16 and I double it up, all right, um, then what would be four doubled? Four times two becomes what? Four times two equals eight, and so I would have a cost of eight dollars. So that double number line helps me see quickly that if I double this, then I double that, and I have an $8 cost for 16 avocados. The next question says, how much do 20 avocados cost? Now the difficulty with 20 is, is that when I look at it, if I put 20 somewhere about here, this is a distance of eight right there, right? 16 minus eight is eight, so half of eight is four. So let's just say something like this. So 20 is here, which is four more, this is not as easy to figure out. I can't multiply anything by eight that I can think of in my head, eight times the number to get to 20, nor 16 times the number to get to 20. So it becomes a little bit trickier to figure out how much eight of the, uh, how much 20 avocados are gonna cost. So to do that, what would be helpful for me would be to know how much does one avocado cost? Because if I can figure out how much one costs, I do know that one times 20 can get me to 20, right? So I know that's possible, and that would help me get from this cost times 20 over to there. So how will we find out how much one avocado costs? Already, we know that four avocados cost $8, right? So we know four avocados are $8. If I'm gonna make this into a one and going this way, I can divide by eight or multiply by the reciprocal, right? So to go to the left this way, I can think about this being divided by eight or multiplying by the reciprocal, one eight. I prefer the multiply by the reciprocal, but we'll leave it on both there for you. If I go this direction to go to the, the value of this uh, ratio, 
to find the equivalent ratio here, then I have to do the same thing to the four. I need to also divide by eight, divide by eight, or multiply by the reciprocal. So if I do four divided by eight, what do we end up with? Well, four divided by eight, four divided by eight is the same as, four eighths is the same as one half. Now we're talking about money, of course, so I don't want to put a half there. So these were dollars, so what is half of a dollar? Half of a dollar is 50 cents, right? So we can do 0 0.50, something along those lines. So one avocado is going to cost me 50 cents. You good with that so far? Okay, so 50 cents right there. So we know that one avocado is 50 cents. The question then is how much for 20? So if I take this one and multiply it by 20, that gets me 20 avocados. And if I take my 50 cents, 50 cents for one avocado, and multiply it by 20, that's gonna give me my cost for 20 avocados, which in this case would be $10. So I can put a 10 right there, just like that, okay? So we can see here that basically we found how much one costs and allowed us to figure out how much 20 you're gonna cost. We could do the same thing here for how much do nine avocados cost. Again, one avocado costs 50 cents. So 50 cents times a nine is gonna give us $4.50. So it's very helpful to find the price for one because it allows you to, on a, number, a double number line, to find the price for multiple uh, different amounts of avocados or whatever the product might be, okay? Okay, let's take a look at number two. Number two says I have 12 large bottles of water and they cost $9 each, right? So what, what do I have here? I have basically, if I have my double number line like this, and I have my dollars here and my bottles there, I'm saying that $9 can get me 12 bottles, right? That's my basic ratio that I'm working with here, nine over 12. Nine bottles, nine dollars for 12 bottles. So how many bottles can I buy for three dollars? Okay, so to set this up, we need to think about this way. I have nine over 12, which is my dollars and my bottles. And I wanna turn that into, I wanna find out, okay, to find the equivalent ratio, how much can I get for three dollars? All right, so to go from a nine to a three, I'm gonna divide by three, right? So nine divided by three equals three. So I'm gonna do the same thing down here to this part. I'll do 12, divide it by three, and that will tell me that I can get four bottles for three dollars. So I can just mark that here, four bottles for three dollars and add another equivalent ratio to my double number line. What is the cost per bottle? So here is my cost per bottle, means I wanna put my dollar amount, which is nine, and the per is like this, per, and the bottle here is 12. So I have a choice here. I could do nine divided by 12, or I could do my other number, which is three divided by four, right? Either one's gonna work. Notice that nine divided by 12, three divided by four, are equivalent, right? I can reduce that down there. Three divided by four, probably a fraction you wanna be familiar with in terms of how it converts to a decimal, does equal 0 0.75. So we know the cost for one water bottle is actually 75 cents. Now if I add it to my number line here, I could say, okay, uh, one bottle is 0.75, okay? and that's where I'd put that there on the double number line if we wanted to add it there. So knowing the unit price for one, I could then answer part C, which is how much do seven bottles of water cost? We take our unit price, which is 75 cents, and we multiply that by the number of bottles we're gonna have, which is seven, okay? So 75 cents times seven, in our case here, is gonna equal five dollars and twenty five cents something just like that okay so that's the idea there for number two let's practice with another one here this one a little more space because there's no picture in my way <laughs> number three 
A 10 pound sack of flour costs $8. All right, so let's draw a little double number line. One and two. We'll put our dollars up here for now. We'll put our F for flour down here. And we can say that uh, $8. For $8, I can get 10 pounds of flour. Great. Next question, our first question actually says, how much does 40 pounds of flour cost? Well, 40 is gonna be this way, right there. And so what they're asking us is, what's the dollar amount that goes right above the 40? Well, I can use the double number line. That's one way of doing it. I could also find the how much for one pound of flour, right? So if I found that, then I could work that out there. Of course, you look at B, B says, what's the cost per pound? Cost per pound means what is the cost for one pound, which is that one right there. So this is gonna answer B, and this one's gonna answer the A part. So let's look at this one. These are numbers we can work with. I can do this without having to find the unit price first. Why? Because I can recognize that 10 times four can get me to 40. So I can use the eight and do eight times four and eight times four gets you to $32 for 40 pounds of flour. So we would say $32 for A. Now for the B, for the cost per one, all right, we're talking about the cost per one, we could look at what we do know, which is $8. Right now we know it's $8 for 10, and the question is how many dollars for one? That's the idea. That's what we're trying to find out here. So when I do 10 divided by 10, I get one. So really all I'm doing is eight divided by 10. Well, how do you write eight divided by 10? It looks like this, right? Eight over 10, which is exactly what we started with. So eight divided by 10 is something that, again, I can reduce down and that becomes, uh, well, I can reduce it or not. I mean, I could just do the math problem. You use your calculator, you know, which you want, if you want to do that, I could do eight divided by 10 and get oh, 0.8. What's that mean? Well, it's 8 tenths, so 0.8, we're talking about money. We're talking about 80 cents. So 80 cents is the cost per pound of flour. It's gonna cost me 80 cents per that. So this phrase, this cost per phrase, is what we call our unit price, okay? Cost per is our unit price. That's what we're dealing with and talking about there. Okay, all right, now, let's take a look at this question right here, looking at our next activity. If we said that pizza costs $1.25 per slice, at this rate, how much will six slices cost? Okay, so what we wanna find out is, we're gonna talk about in this next activity, is what does this phrase, at this rate, actually mean? At this rate, actually mean when we're talking about something like that is at this rate what we're dealing with or we're talking about are equivalent ratios if I'm asking you about something that is at this rate I'm asking you to make an equivalent ratio that's the idea right now we know that a dollar 25 as a ratio goes to one slice of pizza right a dollar 25 to one slice that's my current ratio if I want to make an equivalent ratio then I want to set up a ratio that's going to be something some cost so something we can put a money sign there something to six slices right and that's what we're trying to find out here what is the equivalent ratio that matches or correlates to a dollar twenty-five to one that we would say for something to six. That is the idea. Okay. So again, you might set it up with words like this. We could set the same kind of idea up as again, it's a dollar twenty-five for one, and so we're talking about how much does it cost for six. And if they are equivalent ratios, it's like putting an equal sign right there, and we look for a way to make that connection. Okay, there's a couple ways to make the connection. Your teachers might explain some of the more arithmetic type of ways. Um, if there's a simple relationship this way, which this has one, times six, 
then we just follow the same pattern on the other one, multiply by six, and we could solve that there. So another way of saying what's equal is we could say at this rate, at this price, at this unit. Those are all the same ideas. So at this rate, at this price, um, and we could say per unit, like we saw in the last activity. These are all ways of saying, can you find for me an equivalent ratio? Okay, so let's take this idea here and we're gonna take it into the next activity. Okay, number three, more shopping. In more shopping, we see that we have four bags of chips cost $6. What is the cost per bag? And also at this rate, which we'll find out from A, how much will seven bags of chips cost? Okay, so let's see what we have here. First of all, we have four bags of six for $6. Okay, so what do we know? We know that our cost is $6 for four, right? We have a six to four is our, our ratio that we're dealing with. I wanna find an equivalent ratio to do cost per bag, meaning I wanna find out what it costs, which I don't know, for one bag. This is my bag, this is my money, top and bottom. Make sure your terms line up. So, to go from four to one, how do we do that? That's dividing by four, four divided by four is one. So I'll do the same thing on top, six divided by four. And six divided by four, and if I just use a calculator real quick for some time here, six divided by four equals 1.5. Now we're talking about money, so we would say that the cost per bag is a dollar fifty per bag. That's our idea so far, because six divided by four is 1.5. At this rate, well, what rate? The rate of per bag, cost per bag. How much are seven? Well, a dollar fifty times seven is how much they would cost for seven. And a dollar fifty times seven is ten dollars and fifty cents. All right, looking at number two. How to use book sale. Five books cost fifteen dollars. So what's our rate? Our rate is currently fifteen dollars for five books. That's what we know so far. $15 per five books. We want to know the cost per book, the cost per one book, meaning what is our cost going to be for one book? Again, we can look here and recognize that I'm dividing by five to get to there. So if I do 15 divided by five, 15 divided by five <laughs> equals three. So my cost per book will be $3 per book. All right. Again, this could be illustrated on our double number line if you want to do that that way again, right? Here's our cost. Here's our B for book. And we were given that it costs $15 for five books. The question is, how much does it cost for one book? So this setup is exactly what I have here. Before we said if we we're going this direction, we we're going to divide. And so we divided by five and we do the same thing up here. 15 divided by five gave us x, and that's what we did right there. I could also remember this also can be multiplied by the reciprocal, so if I thought about that way, that's 15 times the reciprocal, one fifth, which is still 15 divided by five, or I could reduce, and I get three over one, which equals still three. Let's move on to part B. At this rate, three dollars per book, how much can you buy for $21? Okay, a little different organization here, right? Now we're not saying, okay, let's multiply it. It's saying, okay, I have $3 per book. I have $3, and I use another $3, and I use another $3, and I keep doing that until I've used $21. Each one of these payments, three, is gonna be another book that I buy. So how many books would I buy at 21? Or think of it a different way, if I know that my cost per book here is $3, what we're asking is if I go over here to $21, how many books would that be on my double number line? To go from three to 21 is what? Now what is that gonna take? How do I go from three to 21? 
321 is multiplying by 7. So 1 times 7 is going to be 7. So how many books can you buy? We would say you would buy 7 books. Sorry, it's my answers are all scrambled, scrambled up there with my notes, but it's all the space I have. All right, number three. Neon bracelets cost a dollar for four. Well, that's exciting. So here's our neon bracelets. We have a dollar, we have our dollars. We have bracelets, and we say that for one dollar, I can get four bikes bracelets. What is the cost per bracelet? Meaning I wanna get the bracelet down to one and find out what my cost is going to be. So to get from four to one, what do I do? Multiply by the reciprocal, right? Or divide by four. If I multiply by the reciprocal, I end up with one. That's good there. So let's do the same thing times one-fourth for this one. One times one-fourth equals one-fourth. Now I don't put money in fraction terms, so one-fourth is the same as what? 0.25. So it's going to cost me 25 cents for one bracelet. At this rate, 25 cents per bracelet, how much will 11 neon bracelets cost? So we're asking here, if I know that it's 25 cents for one, and I'm gonna have 11 of them, what is 25 cents times 11? That's gonna be $2.75. Okay? So that's the idea there. Again, today's lesson really is talking about what we call the unit price, okay? And a unit price is the price of one thing, one thing. That's the way that works there. And the price of one ticket, one slice of pizza, or one kilogram of peaches. So as an example here, if four movie tickets cost $28, then the unit price would be the cost per ticket, right? Unit price, cost per ticket, just the one thing there. And we did it with a double number line to show how that works there. And so with a number line, you can see how it lines up, but we also can look and say, well, to go from four to one, we multiply by the reciprocal, right? Four times one fourth gets me to one. So I do the same thing here and multiply by the same reciprocal. And 28 times one fourth is 28 divided by four, which equals seven, which matches that right there. All right, so that's the idea behind today's lesson. Let's pause there and then work on your homework and then we'll come back together to check it in just a moment. All right, let's take a look at tonight's homework for lesson eight. It says, in 2016, the cost of two ounces of pure gold was $2,640. So I have cost 20, 2640 for two ounces. Complete the double number line to show the cost for one, three, and four. Okay, so let's work backwards here. Let's first of all do with the one. So to go from two to one, I can either think of it as what? Two things, divide by two or multiply by the reciprocal times a half. Either way, I'll do the same thing for this number here. So what is 2,640? 2,640 divided by two. I get a one there, I get a three there, a two there, and a zero there. So the cost is gonna be $1,320 for one ounce of gold. Knowing that, it's a pretty straightforward multiplication problem to find out how much for three times three and four, which is times four. So 1320 times three is 3,960. And 1320 times four is 5,280. And those are my different costs for the varying amounts, uh, varying ounces of gold. Number two, the double number line shows that four pounds of tomatoes here costs $14. Draw tick marks and write labels to show the prices of one, two, and three pounds of tomatoes. Okay, well here's four, halfway is about there at two, which puts a three about there and a one about there. I need to add my matching tick marks down here for dollars to figure that out. So, a couple ways of doing it, okay? I could start off and say, well, half of four is two, so that's half, right? That's divided by two, so half of 14 it's going to be seven. That works for that one, but that's as far as that'll take me, doesn't it? It won't take me to the one and the three. So to get from four to one, be a little faster, four divided by four 
is one. So 14 divided by four. Well, that's a little bit trickier, right? I don't know what 14 divided by four is. I need to do that there. So 14 and four. Four goes into one zero times. Four goes into 14 three times. So there's 12. We subtract 14 minus 12 is two. Bring down that zero. Four goes into 25 times. Put that decimal dot place up there, point up there. Five times four is 20 and we're at zero. So what do we know? It costs me $3.50 for one. You might have used some mental math and been able to say, well, half of seven, if I cut this in half, is 350. Then you'd be okay there, right? But that's okay. Saw it or didn't see it, no big deal. So now we gotta get back to the three. So let's take our three value. To go from one to three is what? Times three. So let's do 350 times three. So 350 times three. It's going to be equal to 0, 15 carry the 1, and 10. So we're going to have $10.50 for 3. Okay? So using that double number line again helps me organize my thinking and just find the missing values there as I go along. Number 3. A movie tip, oh sorry, four movie tickets cost $48 at this rate, equivalent ratio. What is the cost of 5 and 11? Well, let's find the cost of 1 first of all. Okay? Right now it's $48 for four tickets. Well, how much does it cost for one ticket? If we can find that out, then we can answer these ones pretty simply. So to go from four to one is gonna be a divide by four. So let's do 48 divided by four. Hopefully you're starting to see here that it's all set up already for you to do 48 divided by four right there. So here's 48 divided by four. Four goes into four one time. And zero. Four goes into eight two times. So our cost per ticket is actually twelve dollars per one ticket. That's our unit price. So how much are five tickets? We'll take our cost for one, multiply it by five, and we would say it's going to cost us sixty dollars. How much is eleven? We'll take our cost for one, multiply it by eleven, and we'll have a cost of one hundred and thirty-two dollars. Let's look at number four. Probably bought these items at the grocery store. Find each unit price. That is the price for one, right? So 12 eggs for $3. So right now, it's uh, she's doing 12 eggs for $3. We wanna know how much does one egg cost? So there's one egg. So to get from 12 to one, that's gonna be divided by, right, divided by 12. Okay, so if we do three divided by 12, three divided by 12, like this, 12 goes into three zero times, 12 goes into 32 times, we have 24, bring down a six, zero, 12 goes into 65 times, so we would say 25 cents. So it's 25 cents per egg. If you notice, I had flipped my things over that time. If you've noticed that, usually I do dollars per item, Right, that's okay. I probably should have still done cost per egg. It still ends up with the same answer because as long as my top and bottom uh, values here, this is eggs, eggs, cost are the same, I'm gonna be okay. Let's keep it straight though. Three pounds of peanuts for 750. So we have 750, my cost for three pounds of peanuts there. How much is the cost per pound? The cost per one pound, cost per pound, cost per pound. So we'll do 750 divided by three, and 750 divided by three is $2.50. Next one, four rolls of toilet paper for $2. So we know that it's $2 for four. What is the cost per roll? All right, to find the cost per roll, we do two divided by four, and two divided by four is gonna be 50 cents. So my, my cost per roll is 50 cents per roll. 10 apples for 350, how much is the cost per apple? Right now we know that we have $3.50 for 10. My cost per apple is gonna be 350 divided by 10, which is gonna be 35 cents. All right, so that's that setup there to get that set up right. That's our cost per apple, cost per apple, so on and so forth. Okay. I'm gonna read this one here and then write down my facts on the next page because the work is on the back next page. It says that it said that Claire made a smoothie 
with one cup of yogurt. So we have yogurt was one cup. Three tablespoons of peanut butter. So peanut butter was three. And that's tablespoons, so capital T. This is a cup. Uh, we had two teaspoons of chocolate syrup. So chocolate syrup was two little tea, teaspoons. And two cups of crushed ice. So ice was two cups. Kieran tried to double this recipe. He used two cups of yogurt, so we've got two there, six tablespoons of peanut butter, six there, five teaspoons of chocolate syrup, five there, and four cups of crushed ice. He didn't think it tasted right. Describe how the flavor of Kieran's recipe compares to Claire's recipe. So these are our two recipes here, right? So he wanted to double it. Did he double it actually? Well, let's take a look. One times two is two. Three times two is six. Two times two is, hmm, should be four right there, right? So it should have been a four. Two times two is four, that's good there. So if anything, what did he do? He added more chocolate syrup than uh, Claire did. So the recipe's not gonna taste quite the same, is it, right? We would say it's more chocolatey there. So make sure you write down what, what you wanna say there. B, how should Kieran change the quantities to use so the smoothie tastes just like it? So that's gonna be equivalent. If he wants to be equivalent, he should use only four teaspoons of chocolate syrup, not five, and then it would taste the same. You'd have twice as much, but it would taste exactly the same. And finally, number six is a good question here. All right, so let's take a look at number six. A drama club is building a wooden stage in the shape of a trapezoidal prism. The height of the stage is two feet. Some measurements of the stage are shown here. So we have a stage there where you're gonna see the, the outside faces of it all and the top face there. What is the area of all the faces of the stage excluding the bottom? I'll show your reasoning. If you get stuck, consider drawing a net of the prism. Okay, so for this stage, you're gonna have a top. This is our top right there, which fits right on top of this place. But then you're gonna have these four sides that go around it. We're gonna assume that what's inside of it doesn't matter. It's just gonna be four sides and a top. So five pieces in all, okay? So to find out the area of all the faces, we're gonna have five pieces, with the four sides around and the top. So let's do our four sides around. First of all, we have this one right here, this front, which is a two by 20 rectangle. So 20 times two has an area of 40 feet squared. This back wall here has is 13 by two. So 13 times two equals 26 feet squared. This wall over here is a 10 by two. So 10 times two is 20 feet squared. And this one is the same as before, 13, .2, 13 times two, which is 26 feet squared. So our sides of this stage are gonna be combined here to give us 12, carry the one, four, eight, nine, 10, and 11, 112 square feet around the faces of that shape. Now we need to include the top. Well, the top has, first of all, a square. The square is an area of 10 times 12, which is 120 square feet. But then I also have these triangle shapes, which are identical. Area of a triangle is one half of the base, which is five times the height. Now be careful, this is not a height. The height is located here. It makes a 90 degree angle with the base. So our height is actually 12. So one half of five times 12, well, five, half of 12. Five times 12 is 60. Half of 60 is 30. So these each have, and remember each, they both do, have an area of 30. So the top has an area of 120 plus 30 plus 30 for a total of six, seven, eight, 180 feet squared. So our sides are 112, our top is 180. When we add those up, we have 180 plus 112 for a total of 292 square feet, okay? And that's the answer to that problem right there. That's it for today. Have a great one. We'll see you next time.